everyone. Welcome to Shaping Memories and welcome to this activity. It is called Who, What, or Where Am I? And today we have a What Am I? We don't have a lot of what am I's. I mean, we have a lot more who am I than what am I. So I'm kind of excited about this. We have 25 clues today. And so as we've learned before, the clues are very vague and they get more and more specific. So hopefully around clue 15, 18, you start to kind of figure out who it is. So let's get right into it. I am gonna wear my reading glasses because the writing is getting smaller and smaller. So um, let's start out with clue number one. Now remember, we're doing a what am I? So it's an object or a thing. All right, here we go. The idea of me came in 1872. Clue number two. The patent for me came in 1873. It was number 139, 121. Number three, the man I'm named for is not the man who invented me. However, the man I'm named for made me possible. Number four, miners, ranchers, and laborers loved me. Next clue, others were eager to compete when my patent expired in 1890 but my brand was well established. Number six, I kept tabs on things. Number seven, Bing, Bing Crosby was a big fan. Number eight, two horses helped advertise me. They still do. Number nine, in 1934, I was introduced to women and the world was scandalized. Number 10, World War II brought me international fame. Uh, let's see, number 11, rebellious, rebellious youth embraced me in the 1950s and 1960s. Number 12, baby boomers gave me the popular name I go by today. Are you starting to figure it out? Number 13, some of my design features changed during the war years. Number 14, collectors search in thrift stores and at yard sales, hoping to find a vintage example of me. Hmm. Number 15, the company that makes me is committed to recycling and sustainability. Number 16, you can also find me with celebrities from Marlon Brando to Michael J. Fox. Hmm. Number 17, the oldest pair of me is estimated to be worth $150,000 and is kept in a fireproof safe. Wow, that's a big clue right there. Okay, number 18. My original patent was for, quote, improvement in fastening pocket openings, end quote. Number 19. You may find parts of my history riveting. We're getting closer and closer. Do you know what it is? All right, number 20. I am famous for my strength and durability. Number 21. My company buildings are insulated with denim. All right, I bet you're getting it. Number 22. An entire website is devoted to people telling about their experiences with me. Number 23, I'll keep you in stitches. Number 24, if you haven't warned me, you know someone who has. 
and maybe still does. And our last Kilu, number 25. If you ask me what time it is, I will always say 501. So there's your 25 clues. Think about it. What am I? What am I describing? So I'll be back in a little bit and I'll give you the answer. And we'll learn about the what am I. Okay, everyone, welcome back. So I think you probably got this one, but if you didn't, the answer is 501 Levi jeans. So if you had guessed Levi jeans, specifically 501 Levi jeans, you would be correct. But if you got Levi jeans, you're really close. So let's learn a little bit about this. So I have a little bit of history for you. Here we go. Levi jeans are an American story. They were designed and manufactured in the 1870s by two immigrants who wanted to provide miners, ranchers, and other working men a solid pair of pants that would last. Although the company now manufactures jackets, shirts, shorts, face masks, and jeans in a variety of styles, the original 501s remain the most popular and the most familiar. I don't know how many of you out there had an original pair of 501 jeans, but wow, they go for a lot if you have very vintage ones. So let's hear about the jeans. All right. The year was 1853. News of the California gold rush had reached the East Coast where a young immigrant named Levi Strauss, was working in his brother's dry goods store. Eager to make a name and a fortune for himself, the 24-year-old took off for San Francisco. There, he opened the West Coast brand, branch of J. Strauss brother, brother and Company. Within a few years, he had renamed his branch Levi Strauss and Company. Let's skip ahead to 1872. By then, Levi had built a successful business and has established an impressive reputation. One of his customers was Jacob Davis, a tailor based in Reno, Nevada, who bought denim and other fabrics. At the request of a Reno customer, Davis had been working on a way to make more durable trousers for workers. He came up with the idea to use metal rivets at seams where the fabric was most stressed. His pants quickly became popular. Davis wrote to Strauss, his denim supplier, to describe his tougher pants and to ask if Strauss would help him apply for a patent on the idea. Wow how things just come together. On, okay, so Levi quickly saw the potential and agreed to finance the patent application. On May 20th, 1873, the two men received patent number 139,121 from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Their patent was for improvement in fastening pocket openings. Production of riveted trousers began right away, and before long, waist overalls, what we now call jeans, were sold throughout the West. That's amazing. That's an amazing American story. So, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, the patent that Strauss and David held was good until 1890. After that, other companies could and would start producing and selling their own line of workwear. So, knowing this, Strauss and Davis began using their now famous logo of two horses trying in vain to pull apart a pair of their pants. This logo, which was introduced in 1886, clearly depicted the quality and strength of the brand. When new lines of riveted pants began to hit stores in 1890s, the Two Horse brand was already established as not only the first, but the best 
and the most durable. Wow, and it's still known today, still keeps going on today. So I'm gonna read you about the collectibles about the Levi uh, 501 jeans because I thought this was pretty um, incredible. Uh, so imagine if you had paid $6 for a used pair of Levi's at a thrift store. Those jeans might be worth $100 or more to a collector. As a matter of fact, some vintage Levi jeans and jackets have sold for thousands of dollars each. In 2001, a pair of jeans dated back to 1880 sold at auction for $46,532. In 2005, another pre-1900 pair of Levi's sold for $60,000. Both of those record sales were blown away in 2016 when a collector paid almost $100,000 for a single pair of Levi's. So, how do you know if your Levi's might be collect coveted by collectors? So, you have to follow the changes in the tabs, the number of pockets, changes to the design a little bit, and other elements. All of these are like timestamps to collectors, and they use them to determine the age and the value of a pair of Levi's. So, in the case of the $100,000 jeans that sold in 2016, there were clues in the jeans themselves. Levi's added belt loops to their jeans in 1922. Before then, most men wore suspenders to keep their pants up. Those $100,000 jeans have no belt loops, which dates them before 1922. Another feature, feature helping to date them is a single back pocket. Levi's added the second pocket in 1905. So you have to know your jeans and know what you're looking for. If you're a collector, when you look at those jeans in a thrift store or at a yard sale, everywhere else so uh, let's see the jeans uh, the jeans had been stored in a trunk for decades the owners were able to follow their journey by tracing the denim back to a mill in New Hampshire that mill sold the fabric to Levi's manufacturing in San Francisco from there the jeans were traced to their original owner Tucson Arizona storekeeper uh, Mr. Warner who bought the jeans in 1893. Wow. So the jeans themselves have a history in them and they can date them back, I guess, by how they're created, where the fabric came.